Hi, it's Dwyer. It's August the 15th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's unofficial. It really hasn't been announced. Some of the fighters are represented by different promoters. Right? But I hope every boxing fan right now is enjoying the de facto tournament that's taking place right now at welterweight. Understand, this is the best type of tournament. You have four guys left standing right now. Four guys who simply need to know. Right? One belt is not enough. Each of the four needs to know whether they are the best in the division. Right? Understand, in boxing, you can hide. If you have a belt, some of the competing sanctioning bodies won't consider you in their rankings. So a guy with the belt at 147 could say, hey, I'm not going to fight these other guys. I'm going to collect paydays off the mandatories from my own sanctioning body. Right? Why would I fight a monster who holds a belt in this weight class for another organization when I don't have to? I'm already the champ. I can get championship dollars fighting other guys. Right? But that's not who these four guys are. So, let's go through it. Right? You have four men with belts who are thirsty still. Right? You have three people. That unbeaten champion Errol Spence wants to fight. Three. The guy he's fighting next, Sean Porter, who holds his own belt. Understand, neither guy needs to fight the other to have a belt at welterweight. Both guys already have belts. It's not enough, right? This is like Tom Brady thinking about walking away after a Super Bowl win in his 40s and deciding, no, I, I can't do that. Whatever I've done in the past, however many rings I have, it's not enough. I need to compete. So you have Errol Spence, who has decided that his way to prove to you, and this is a guy who many of you feel is already on the very short list of the best fighters in the sport pound for pound. But that's not enough for Errol Spence. Errol Spence feels that the way to prove to you that he's the best is to fight rival champion Sean Porter. And then after that, let's face it, you know the personality. He wants to fight rival champion Manny Pacquiao. And after that, you know the personality. He wants to fight rival champion Terrence Crawford. Right? Think about Manny Pacquiao for a moment. He's a guy in his 40s at welterweight. Right? In his 40s at welterweight. He just fought Keith Thurman. You know, man, he's not here just for paydays. You know, Manny wants to fight Errol Spence. The winner of Spence Porter. You know, Manny wants to fight Terrence Crawford. In other words, Manny's version of being in his 40s is to fight guys 10 years younger than him who are in their primes who have titles. Right? Sean Porter used to spar with Manny Pacquiao. Not many people realize that. Sean Porter in interviews has said, yeah, I feel I could beat Manny Pacquiao. Right? To get to Manny Pacquiao, <laughs> Sean Porter's fighting Errol Spence. Then you have Terrence Crawford, who fascinates me. 
Folks, he's already been what very, very few fighters have been. The undisputed champion of a weight class. Think about it. Crawford was undisputed at 140 pounds. He's still unbeaten as I make this video. So how has Crawford decided to spend his 30s? He wants to be undisputed at 147. So if you Google Crawford here on YouTube, you're going to see Crawford meeting up with Errol Spence and challenging him to fight and stuff like that. Crawford, Crawford in interviews is actively saying, hey, it doesn't matter what promoter you're with. We should get in the ring to find out who's the best. Right? You would have thought Crawford's a young guy trying to establish himself. Not a guy who has already been undisputed. Right? So Crawford is trying to be, believe it or not, undisputed in a second weight class. So let's talk about Spence, Sean Porter. The bet I like is Spence by KO. I'm going to hedge the play with the over. Right? I don't think Sean Porter can stop Errol Spence. I believe Sean Porter's only chance of winning the fight is to do so by decision. Right? I believe the most likely outcome, quite frankly, is Spence by KO. I recognize that Sean Porter has never been stopped. Right? But understand. In a world where there are many mid-range hookers, including Danny Garcia, who Sean Porter beat, right? I need to have people look at that film, right? Danny, big time puncher, but Danny needs space. He needs you at mid-range, right? I would consider Deontay Wilder to be a long-range puncher. Right, a guy who could knock you out from across the ring. But I would consider Danny Garcia to be mid-range. Understand, that's not Errol Spence in my opinion. Errol Spence is short-range. There's a difference. You watch a Danny Garcia fight. You watch the Danny Garcia-Sean Porter fight. And Danny's core... We'll call it this part of his body, right? He doesn't use that core to lean on you at all. He doesn't use that core to corner you someplace, right? Get his body close to yours to freeze you before doling out punishment, right? No, Danny's the guy who is relying on his punching power, not his body. Now, Errol Spence, by contrast, relies on his body. And understand, short-range punchers, guys who can generate a lot of power throwing very short punches, Rocky Marciano, right? They can bounce you off their body, get you right here, and then throw a punch that knocks you out, right? Errol Spence wants to get close to you. Errol Spence is big for 147, and he wants to use that size, right? Think George Foreman at heavyweight, where Foreman, and I know I've gotten flack about this online in the past, but you've had big heavyweights, who haven't tried to use their size against a smaller opponent, whereas George Foreman would lean on you, right? It's not just the punches. You'd be dealing with Foreman's weight. Well, Errol Spence is a guy who I believe is fighting an ambush fighter in Sean Porter. Let me just say this too. Sean Porter has been great to me over the years in betting. Right, I still remember very fondly the Sean Porter-Adrian Broner fight. 
right? Sean Porter's been great to me. Errol Spence, I've underestimated Spence in the past. I thought Chris Algieri would do better against Errol Spence. Right? Spence, again, short range, has Algieri right here. Understand, too, Spence moves. Spence is changing the angles. Right? He's the short range guy who you're here, and he's bouncing. And he's getting leverage on shots, leaning his body into it. I've underestimated Spence. I thought Mikey Garcia was going to beat Errol Spence, right? I thought if Mikey could just collapse the pocket, get Errol Spence on his back foot, Errol Spence's game would fall apart. Instead, I got the Errol Spence jab, which I did not know existed. And I've watched several Errol Spence fights. And you had Errol Spence maintaining distance, Busting up Mikey before Mikey even gets in the pocket. Giving a future Hall of Famer who was unbeaten at the time a boxing lesson. Well, I believe Spence fought the Mikey Garcia fight differently. And he's going to fight the Sean Porter fight. Understand, Garcia hits harder than Porter, in my opinion. I understand. Mikey doesn't have a lot of experience at 147, right? I understand that. But that's the Mikey Garcia blueprint. Look at his record. You're going to find Mikey shows up at a weight class, gets the title, moves on, right? Mikey's punch carries. Spence had more to worry about, quite frankly, against Mikey Garcia than he does Sean Porter, right? Garcia also is an accurate puncher. He doesn't throw a lot of wide shots like Sean Porter does, right? Porter will come in and throw punches so wide that Kell Brook against him was able to clinch him often when Porter jumped inside. It's because Porter didn't jump inside with something straight. Porter was jumping inside with looping shots. Well, understand, against a short-range hooker, and we're just going off styles here, a guy like Errol Spence who's prepared to use his body. I believe when Sean Porter jumps inside, Errol Spence is going to catch him, not with a punch, but with his body. In other words, Errol Spence is going to get inside of Sean Porter's punches, and when Porter starts to throw, Spence is going to have a shoulder in the way. And as Porter lands on his shoulder or bounces off Spence's chest, Errol Spence is the kind of short puncher who can literally get shots off and bounce and drop even a guy with a great chin like Sean Porter has, right? The Keith Thurman fight, Thurman does have a punch. But the Keith Thurman fight was such, and it's a tribute to Thurman, because Thurman has a back foot game, where when Porter jumped in the pocket, Keith Thurman was able to take a step back. Right? Thurman needs a little bit of space for his punches. In my opinion, Errol Spence doesn't have to take a step back. Right When Porter jumps in to throw punches, Spence's punches are shorter than Porter's punches. Right, Spence could either counter him, right? Porter comes in, Spence gets inside of Porter's wide-angle shots. Spence could drill it. Or if Spence wants, and Spence knows how to use his body, Spence could have Porter bounce off part of his body and then drill him after he bounces off. This is different, too, than Porter's last fight against a boxer, Ugas. Right? Spence can hunt Porter. Spence could wait for Porter to find him. But I suspect by the fourth round, we're going to have Errol Spence on his front foot landing very short shots. 
I don't expect Errol Spence to try to win this fight behind a jab. I believe Errol Spence understands that he is the puncher in this fight. Porter doesn't have Mikey Garcia's punching power. Right? Porter, I understand Porter's been in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. Understand Pacquiao is much more efficient than Porter. And Pacquiao straight left is one of the great punches in the entire sport. Right? I would put Deontay Wilder's straight right hand above it. But let's just say Manny is very accurate with that straight left. Right? I would also argue that Manny, right, just has the footwork figured out differently. So Manny always seems to be in position to throw that straight left. I think a Pacquiao-Spence fight, ooh, that's a great fight. That's a great fight. But I believe here, based on styles, Sean Porter, who has been great to me, is in over his head. Right? I think Spence is also going to move laterally. And understand, if Sean Porter throws a wide right hand, and Spence gets a shoulder in the way of the right hand, because Spence is going to be collapsing the pocket. I think Spence then has clean shots on Sean Porter. In other words, Spence could bounce to this side, wreck Porter's shoulder while hitting him wide open. I like Spence by KO here. I'm going to hedge the play with the over. Right? Understand what that means, though. If Sean Porter comes out and destroys Errol Spence in the early rounds, you lose it all. Conversely, if Porter wins a decision, the hedge holds. If Spence wins by stoppage late, you win both halves of the bet. If Spence wins by decision, you win the hedge. That's how I see it. Spence by KO. Hedged with the over. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also say too, I'm making this video on August the 15th. Understand if there's later breaking news, that's germane, right? Fighter injury, etc. Then I hope you raise that in the comment section of this video as we get closer to the fight. You need to consider that. This is early. You need to consider late breaking news in placing your bet if you do so later. Thanks for stopping by.